What's going on guys? Jeff here from Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be talking about testing and dosing calcium and alkalinity in the water box. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day and if you're new to what we're doing here this is where I talk about everything reef tank related so if you love reef tanks like I do make sure you smash that subscribe button in the face all right guys so today's subject matter we're going to be talking about testing calcium and alkalinity and we're also going to be talking about dosing by hand yes we're old-fashioned here at Mad Hatter's Reef dosing by hand calcium and alkalinity in the water box now it seems as we evolved as reef keeping hobbyists and as technology continues to bring this hobby further and further down the road it seems like we're more often than not going towards the automated road which there's nothing wrong with that and i would love to get my hands on a trident and be able to test calcium and magnesium and alkalinity multiple times a day and have that be able to communicate to the dose and have just this system of constant monitoring and constant adjustments being made on the tank to keep those parameters exactly where they need to be but there's a lot of money associated with these new devices and to be completely honest with you I'd rather spend the money on corals so today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the levels for calcium and alkalinity in the tank because just recently I've added a lot of corals to the tank and my concern with that was what is that going to do with my parameters? Are my parameters going to be even remotely in check? And with all the corals that I've added to the tank, I wouldn't be surprised if the levels for the tank are completely out of whack, but I could just sit here and continue to speculate or I could bust out the test kits and know because that's the difference between a successful tank and a tank that's most likely going to fail. So that's what we're gonna do in today's episode. We're gonna test and then figure out what do I need to do to make sure that the parameters are where they need to be. So let's jump into it. What's going on guys? So today what I wanted to do for a video, um, wanted to talk about a couple things and more specifically get into hand dosing. Now, anytime that you're dosing anything into your reef tank, it's very important to make sure that you're testing for those parameters. You don't ever want to add anything outside of regular good old fashioned salt water to your aquarium without testing first, during, and after. And the, the reason that this is so important is because ultimately uh, this is a vessel in which you put a lot of money into and to just be adding stuff to it and not knowing what is going on once you're adding it is playing with fire and eventually you'll get burned. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing for uh, calcium and we're also going to be testing for alkalinity. Now, as of late, I've been adding a fair amount of corals to the tank and I haven't documented that yet um, for a reason, uh, which we'll get into in a future video. But uh, with adding a large amount of corals to the water box, it's very important to make sure that the parameters such as alkalinity and calcium and others are staying in check. But for today's video, we're gonna take a look at alkalinity and calcium. So something else that's really important when it comes to uh, dosing parameters, or at least hand dosing, is little graduated cylinders such as this one. Uh, I picked up this whole kit. I have a number of them. I have a 25 milliliter, a 50 milliliter, and a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. I picked them up, they're glass, which um, glass is fragile, but uh, they clean up a little bit better, they look a little bit better long term. And I got these on Amazon uh, for relatively cheap, and I'll put a link down in the description below if you guys want to pick these up. Also, um, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about in today's video, uh, is the calcium sulfur test kit and the alkalinity sulfur test kit, there will be links down in the description uh, if you guys want to pick some of those up and test your parameters in your reef tank. Uh, something else too, I'm assuming that there is something off in the tank. I can kind of tell uh, things aren't where they should be as far as parameters, so if we need to make any adjustments. I also have uh, these alkalinity and calcium supplements uh, that I'm going to be using to 
bring things back to where they need to be. So we're going to start off with the calcium uh, test kit first. Um, I've done this a number of times and I'll say the same thing that I've always said. Uh, as far as doing this by memory, I don't have the best memory. Uh, I've had a lot of head injuries in my life and that has used up all of my storage capacity. So as far as testing um, these I will have to look up the directions. Uh, I'm not Billy Pipes by any stretch of the means. I can't, I, I just don't remember. Um, and I, it's funny because I do this every single week, yet I still can't remember how to do it. Um, I think it's a scoop of the powder, then eight drops of CA, and then I think you just use a syringe to add uh, CA3 until it changes color. Um, I've also lost my chart or the directions for the calcium, so I usually have to jump over um, to a website. My auto top off just kicked on. I usually have to jump over to a website and read over it and check my results and all that stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go grab my iPad. So in the event that you ever lose your instructions, uh, Marine Depot actually has uploaded the instructions as well as the results for your test on their website. So if you ever need to uh, check it out, check out Marine Depot. Uh, they went above and beyond with retyping everything and adding it to uh, their sales page for the test kit. So that's always helpful because I I've lost both the instructions for the alkalinity and the calcium. Don't have a whole lot of battery life left on the iPad. Um, but let's go through. So we need to take the two millimeter syringe and grab some water. And something that I usually try to do is make sure that there is no air bubbles whatsoever in the syringe, just to make sure that my reading is going to be accurate as possible. So we got our two millimeters. All right, so the next step is to add one spoonful of CA1. Don't stir it yet. Then eight drops. Look at me go. I was doing pretty good, actually, so that's good. Um, because the memory bank is shot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Swirl. Ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So with the calcium test kit, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to fill up the syringe with the plastic tip with CA3. I usually like to give this a little bit of a swirl before putting it in the syringe just to make sure everything is mixed up good. And we're going to pull out one millimeter of fluid. We're going to push that plunger to one millimeter and it's okay that there's an air bubble in there that is expected at this point we're going to add I usually do two drops at a time with the syringe to what we have here and whatever the results are we'll be able to read it on the syringe two for good measure and we're at the end point. So we're at blue, kind of looks purple on the camera. That's what you're after with this test kit, is making it go from pink or orange to blue. So now we take our plunger here and we do a quick little reading. As far as what I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call it uh, 0.24, which when we go to our readout here on marinedepot.com, so 0.24 is 380 parts per million, which is on within the range of what we want our calcium at, uh, which is a good thing. So we're, we're on the lower end for a saltwater aquarium. So your typical uh, range for saltwater is going to be anywhere from 380 to 420 parts per million. And we just made the cut with the 380 parts per million in the water box. Uh, so we're in good shape there as far as the calcium goes. I probably wouldn't worry about adding any calcium at this point in time 
uh, but I am going to keep a close eye on it because I have added a large amount of coral to the tank so it's going to be good to make sure that I'm testing the same time um, throughout when I say the same time the same time of the day you don't want to test like you don't want to compare notes from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. because there might be some different things going on in the tank that has impact on alkalinity and calcium and all those things uh, so it's good to make sure that you're testing at the same time a day every single time that you test once a week is going to be enough that's going to suffice in most cases uh, but if you're a little bit worried like I am currently uh, it wouldn't hurt to test you know two times a week really all right so we're gonna go ahead and pick this up what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and I think I may have left this vial for this yeah it's gone all right so I'm gonna have to track down the vial for the alkalinity test kit and I'll be right back all right so I found my vial uh, last time I used it I left it in the bathroom cleaning it out after I was done my test so first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna pull some water out of the tank and that was a really bad pull so usually what works is I'll take the syringe I'll put it in the water pull it once and usually it'll have a good amount of air in there then I'll place it back into the water push it out underneath the water and then pull it again and that usually eliminates any amount of air that is in your syringe so that's perfect we're at the four millimeters which is what the alkalinity test kit requires then we're going to take our KH indicator and we're going to put two drops in four millimeters of water one two give that a little bit of a swirl now we're going to take our KH and just like we did with the CA3, we're going to put our syringe in there, pull our syringe all the way back, and push it forward to the one milliliter line. And that air bubble, you can barely see it, it's right there. That air bubble is supposed to be there. That is figured into the calculation, so you don't have to worry about that. <coughs> all right, so. I'm going to try to do a better job of swirling and adding this stuff at the same time. I'd say one more drop. We are at... Uh, yep, there it is. All right. So, substantially different here. So let's see what we're at for a reading. A little worried. All right, so we are at. I'm going to say that's four eight four eight. So we're at four eight eight point three. Not awful. Um, not great either. You know, your typical alkalinity window for a reef tank is anywhere from eight to twelve dKH. And again, much like the calcium, we're kind of just knocking at the door. So I am going to add. A little bit of alkalinity to the tank I've been testing about the same time a day you know it's not perfect I'm, I'm not a trident by any means uh, but I try to do it first thing uh, Saturday mornings when I get up have my coffee uh, I try to make a routine out of you know getting to the tank and testing it on a weekly basis I log my results so I uh, use the reef trace app and that's pretty helpful uh, that also has um, some information for you in there that is going to help you know give you the instructions that you need for the Salifer test kit and a few others and I think Mark uh, Levingson from Me Loves Reef uh, has done a lot of work for that so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to find uh, a reef calculator and we're going to utilize that uh, then we're going to take one of these graduated cylinders and a little bit of ME coral alkalinity and we're going to add it to the tank and I'm going to show you guys um, how I go about hand dosing a reef tank. So let's jump over to the computer, take a look at what we need uh, to add in millimeters to our system to get it to my ideal spot, which I'm going to call my ideal spot right now, 
9.1 All right guys so we are over at bulk reef supply and we're going to use their brs aquarium and reef calculator now this is probably one of the best calculators out there and essentially all you need to do is it's a drop down menu and it does the calculation for you so we're going to be testing or dosing alkalinity so we select alkalinity and then we're going to be using a liquid soda ash product and then as far as the type of product doesn't really matter uh, we're just going to go with the jug at that point the next step is to calculate your total water volume now this system has a total water volume of 69 gallons so when you think about live rock when you think about sand and equipment you're going to do a little bit of displacement and i'm going to go on the heavier side of displacement so it's going to minimize what i need so let's go with 62 gallons so about five gallons of displacement then we're going to add our current alkalinity level so when we did our testing which it's important to test anytime that you're dosing we've already covered that we tested at 8.2 dkh and we want to raise it to 9.10 dkh hit the calculate button there's going to be some instructions on how to go about adding the product and mixing the product and essentially right there at the top we have our milliliters that we need to add to get the water box to the 9.1 dkh now this is an adjustment that is less than 1 dkh so it's something that i feel okay about adding in one shot so now that we have this information let's go back to the reef tank and dose alkalinity to the point where we are at a dkh that we want to be at so with the calculations that we put into the bulk reef supply calculator um, we're going to be raising the dkh by one uh, and that's probably the max that i am comfortable with as far as making adjustments to the alkalinity and reef tank in a single serving so what i'm going to do now is we're going to take our me coral alkalinity liquid and we're going to pour uh, we're going to go with 35 millimeters we're not going to do the full 39 uh, for this dosage we're going to keep it a little under so i slightly over just a little bit so we're going to make an adjustment there all right so we're at the so we're at 35 millimeters of alkalinity. Now, when adding this stuff to a reef tank, most definitely want to put it in a place that's going to be high flow. If you do not put it in a high flow spot and you just dump it in there, it's almost going to turn into, it's going to look like super glue. Actually, it will dissolve a little bit if you shake, start shaking it up. It's very important to make sure that you're adding your liquid alkalinity to a high flow section of your sump um, actually now that I'm thinking about it this protein skimmer I don't want that on we're gonna shut that off uh, for the time being just because I don't want to where I'm going to be adding that alkalinity to the system it potentially could just get skimmed out uh, so we're gonna turn the skimmer off for a little bit with that what I just did there there's a couple things I want to touch on that really don't fall within uh, the subject but I currently have my protein skimmer or my protein skimmer and my auto top off on the same power brick or power switch. So when I turn off that switch, if I'm doing maintenance to my protein skimmer, if the water level, which this protein skimmer really isn't big enough to cause a problem, but if it was bigger, um, it potentially could. Uh, but that water level will increase in the return section of the sump and potentially set off the alarm that is connected to this auto top off. So having them on the same power strip, I have the ability to shut both of them down at the same time. The downside to having these attached to a power strip is I need to remember to turn it back on. It's very important to make sure that you turn it back on. You don't want it off for a complete you know, 24 hour period uh, because, well, I guess depending on what type of corals you keep, it may be more damaging than not. Uh, but it's very important to make sure that, you know, within a couple hours of dosing anything, it's okay to turn that skimmer back on. I would probably wait, you know, at the most with something like a bacteria dose, I'd wait like a six hour period before turning it back on. And that's not going to hurt anything. So 
not really within the scope of this subject, but something I wanted to touch on because it just happened. Back to dosing our alkalinity solution. So as far as the sump goes, I don't really want to add it to the display. I don't think that that's a good call. I don't really like the idea. I know I've seen tons of videos where people do it, but for me personally, I'd rather have uh, this solution have the time that it needs to kind of mix in a little bit so you're not just dumping, you know, alkalinity right onto a coral because I can only imagine that's going to cause problems. So as far as the way in which this sump is set up, I don't really have any high flow sections with the exception of where the water comes into that first baffle. And as you guys can see, I put in those sponges that I was talking about to keep that salt creep down off the back wall as well as off my wires. And I do have like a little bit of a gap between uh, this sponge and the wall and it's a good little pouring spot for hand dosing um, things like calcium and alkalinity and then it gets mixed very vigorously in that section comes into the skimmer section then goes into the return so it has a good little amount of time before it actually being introduced into the display tank so what I usually like to do with alkalinity when I'm adding it is to add it very very slowly I'm probably even a little obnoxious about how slow I go about adding it. And I literally do a little drop like that, let the cloud that is formed immediately uh, kind of dissipate a little bit, and then slowly add some more. In the past, when I've used a type of dosing pump, I have taken a small little, I actually did it on the 220 gallon, a very small pump and put it just below where uh, the dosing pump would dump the alkalinity and calcium, calcium and having it blowing right at it. So as soon as that stuff hit the water, it was getting mixed very, very thoroughly. You can see it kind of clouding up a little bit in that first section, but as soon as it hits that fast moving water, it kind of dissipates. And that's probably a little bit more than I want to add at one time. We got about 10 milliliters left. I'm sure there wouldn't be anything wrong with me just taking it and feeding it to it, but for some reason I just can't bring myself to it. All right, so now that this is empty, I'm gonna give this a good wash. I don't want it to get stained up like you can kind of see right there already. Um, but essentially, that's how I go about hand dosing. And, you know, you can achieve a solid reef tank with hand dosing. There's a lot of guys out there that have been doing it for a number of years. Uh, you don't need to have the latest and greatest equipment to have the latest and greatest reef tank. But ultimately, uh, as far as testing and dosing of calcium and alkalinity, that's how I've currently been doing it with the water box. That's probably how I'm going to go about doing it for now, uh, just because I, I really don't see the need uh, to put a aquarium controller on here at this point in time. I think that, you know, hand dosing and running my test kits the way I, the way I am currently uh, is just fine for now. All right, folks, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you again here. Same bat time, same bat channel. Peace. Yeah.